All right, hello everybody. It's Dr. Alex Earl We're here at Pure Plastic Surgery today and it's hump day with Dr. Alex Earl. Uh, and today uh, we got some, some very, very kind of important, some very, very interesting information that we're gonna be uh, talking to all you about uh, regarding uh, opening up and of course some of the extra measures that we're gonna have to take uh, due to COVID-19, okay? Uh, so first of all, you know, we're all very, very excited. It's looking very, very positive um, that we are gonna go ahead and be able to open and start doing elective surgery here in Florida uh, once the order, uh, you know, by the governor is lifted um, on May 8th, okay? So as of right now, that's what we're gearing to and that's what we're preparing for, okay? I do have to, uh, I do wanna start off this talk uh, with a few kind of caveats, a few assumptions, okay? Um, but before I do that, how's everybody doing? Are you guys doing okay? I know, you know, there's a lot of uh, people are nervous, uh, people are anxious, um, there's a lot of questions out there, everybody wants the answers immediately, and I get it, I get it, you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes into surgery um, and everything else, and so, you know, we are doing our very best to try to, you know, create the safest environment for you. Uh, and at the same time, answer all your questions and try to make sure that you're organized and prepared in time for this, you know, very, very important uh, journey that, that we're embarking on, that we're embarking on uh, together, okay? And so, so we get it. And hopefully after today, you have a lot of your questions answered and hopefully after today, that anxiety level will come down uh, and everybody will feel comfortable that, you know, we're doing the very best here uh, for you, uh, but not only for you, but for our staff, for ourselves and for everybody involved, okay? Um, one of these assumptions that we all have to make is that life is not going to go back to how it was before all this, okay? Um, life is not going to go back to how it was in November of last year, okay, when you're sitting around on Thanksgiving with your family. Uh, unfortunately, it's just not. Um, so as much as we would like to kind of put our head in the sand like an ostrich and hope that when we pop our head out, everything would just be, you know, the same, it's just not going to be that way. We're all going to have to adjust to a new reality, unless we're willing to, of course, put our head in the sand, wait for, you know, between a year, a year and a half until there's a vaccine and not do anything else, which of course is just, it's just not possible. We can't do that. Okay. So we have to get back to, you know, to, to work. And we have to you know, make sure that the economy keeps going and everything else, but we have to do it uh, now with this COVID-19 around. And so we have to do it differently than how things were before, okay? That's just an assumption that has to be accepted by, by everybody, really. Um, and that's what we're working with uh, here as well, okay? A couple other assumptions that need to be accepted uh, in order to you know, kind of move on with this talk, okay? Um, as you all know, um, I'm double board certified and you know, I have to do things that are acceptable by my board. I have um, board certified by two boards that are, are very, very important. The American Board of uh, Surgery and the American Board of Plastic Surgery, okay? Um, you know, I am a member of the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, okay? I'm a member of, in great standing with the society, all right? I'm also a fellow of the American College of Surgeons as well, okay? Um, and our OR is certified by the Joint Commission, okay? It is the highest standard of safety that an office based surgery can achieve, okay? Um, and that's what we have here, all right? So we are Joint Commission certified, okay? And then of course, we have to accept the fact that of course, you know, our patients, you know, you trust me. You're literally placing your life in my hands, okay? That's a lot of trust you're placing upon me and it's a lot of responsibility. So I have to do everything that I can to make sure that you are safe. But not only you, all of my staff as well, and the entire clinic has to be safe. And, and, and I put here, I put, let me tell you guys a, you know, a secret here. Um, I'm sure maybe some of you guys didn't know, but I'm human too. Yes, it's true. I'm human. I'm a father. I have a wife. I have three kids. Um, I have to protect myself as well. Okay? So, putting all of this together, okay, and the fact that we haven't gotten any like direct protocol from anyone, okay, we're trying to put things the, you know, the best we can to protect everybody, make sure everybody's safe. And of course, I'm one of the first ones to do it because as you all know, I'm, you know, I'm more of a leader. Uh, now I'll follow her and I'm sure that the other clinics and people down here in Florida will start to come up with their you know, own protocols probably uh, soon or maybe after they listen to us here, okay? All right, 
So, having said all that, let's get into it. All right, what are going to be our current pro uh, COVID protocols? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, one more assumption we have to make is that this is based on the current information that we have right now, April 29th, 2020, at approximately 5 p.m. Okay, this is the information that we have right now. This is the information that I have to work with. Okay, if the governor says something in two days, you know, it's not my fault. I'm sorry, but I can't control the world, okay? Um, if the CDC comes up with some different guidelines, again, you know, we'll have to go with that information. If newer, more faster tests come out, great, awesome, but we'll have to accept it when it comes out and when it happens, okay? If it turns out the antibody tests are, are now acceptable, which they're, which they're saying they're not at this moment in time, then we'll do those. Those are much faster, much quicker. We can do them right here, okay? All these things can change, but I can't control any of it. All I can do is do what I, I think is the best, for me, for my patients, and for my staff at this present moment. Okay? All right. What are the protocols? So, uh, I kind of wrote them over here just to, for reference. You're not going to be able to read them from there. But this will, it's going to be distributed to basically everybody, all our patients, all our staff, and everybody involved. Okay? You will, there will be a notice at the front door. It's going to be huge. You can't miss it. Okay? It's going to say the following things. Before you enter this facility, you are affirming and attesting to the several points. One, that in the last 14 days, you haven't come in contact with anyone that's positive for COVID-19 or suspected to be positive for COVID-19. Okay. Uh, two, that in the past 14 days, you haven't had any symptoms that are related to COVID-19. Okay. The most common ones that we know are dry cough, shortness of breath, fever. Okay. Um, loss of, uh, newer ones that came out are loss of, uh, of a sense of smell and taste. Um, as well and unusual fatigue, you know fatigue that you're not you don't know why that's happening where it's coming from Okay, also uh, Within the past month you couldn't have traveled to uh, What the US Department of State is calling level two three and four uh, Countries, okay, so some examples are like, you know, China Italy Spain a lot of countries in the European Union and Iran as well But it's not limited to those. Okay, so You have to basically read that entire thing. You have to attest to all those points if you say yes to any of those points, then you cannot come into the facility, okay? If you say no to all the points, then you are able to come into the facility. Once you come into the facility, there's, there's, a, there's literally a, it's, it's, it's one of the wall ones. Um, actually, can we, can we see the one in the back there? No, it's hidden right now. Let's see, can you see that one there? Yep. Yes. This one here? Okay. All right, that is the hand sanitizing station, which as soon as you walk in the door, is the first thing going to be on your left-hand side. Everyone, as soon as they walk in, has to sanitize their hands. Everyone, absolutely everyone in here is going to have a face mask, a surgical face mask, okay? Um, of course, all the staff will have them, and the patients and their caregivers will need to have them. And if you don't have one, then we will provide one to you, okay? So those are the first things you have to do as soon as you walk in. All right, um, the, we're going to be limiting, you know, the flow of people through the clinic uh, and therefore that means that um, you are limited to only one caregiver. That caregiver, of course, has to be an adult. There will be no children allowed, okay? No children at any time, okay? That caregiver is an adult. If you need assistance, so you're post up day one, you're feeling weak, then of course that caregiver will be able to come here with you. They have to follow all the same protocols that the patients uh, follow. Uh, but if you're doing well, walking on your own or anything else, we'd prefer for that caregiver to wait outside in the car downstairs, okay? Once you're inside the lobby, all social distancing measures uh, have to be respected. We have enough room to be for you to be six feet away from everyone at all times, okay? All right. For those that are now in surgery, if you're in surgery and recovery, your caregiver will not be allowed to wait in the lobby area. They have to wait either downstairs in the parking lot area, in their vehicle, or elsewhere, okay? But they cannot be sitting here in the lobby area, okay? We have to live with the flow. So we're, our, we're gonna be seeing our pre-ops, we're gonna see our operative patients, we're gonna see our post-up day one, post-up day five patients, but that's it. All others will be seen virtually, okay? New consoles are all virtual, whether you're local or not. Uh, and then, and then late, you know, later post ops are also all virtual. You know, anything beyond post op day five, unless of course there's an issue. Okay, if there's, it's, it's essential for me to see you because there's, you know, a wound or some sort of issue, something we have to deal with. Of course, we'll see you and we'll take care of you. 
Okay. All right. Okay. So that, that I think covers a lot of the protocols um, in terms of kind of being in the clinic. Okay. Now we have to get into you know what's what's kind of caused a lot of uh, uh, questions you know very very recently because we're coming up with our uh, testing uh, type of protocols. Okay. So. We've done, I've done a lot of research, okay? I've looked at everything coming out of the CDC, out of the ASPS, out of the American College of Surgeons, out of the Joint Commission, and everything else, okay? Uh, and I'm putting all that, compiling all that together to try to come up with what is the most reasonable protocol. <laughs> Sorry about that. When we do something like this, of course, there's a, you know, there's a, you gotta get into what is, you know, between ideal and what is actually possible or real, okay? So first of all, you know, what, how do people feel about COVID-19? You have the whole range. Some people feel that it doesn't exist, that it's a hoax, uh, that it doesn't really exist, and why are we doing any of this anyway, right? Some people are like, really scared about it, you know, say, for example, like ICU nurses, they, they see like, a, you know, really, really, you know, sick patients and dying patients, and they want us to do everything like, like a tertiary or coronary care center would do, like, say, the Cleveland Clinic. Okay, huge hospital, basically unlimited capacity, uh, unlimited means uh, to do, you know, to get whatever equipment they have and to do whatever they can do. Okay, of course, we can't, you know, we can't, we certainly don't want to be here. Uh, we don't want to be here, but we can't just realistically be here. We're a, a small office, you know, based setting. So, you know, we're probably going to be somewhere around in this area, okay, because we are a Joint Commission JCO certified. All right. Again, also with you know the traveling and everything else, you know, there's you got to go between ideal and reality. What would be the most ideal? The most ideal, you would come to Miami two weeks beforehand. Uh, you would then self isolate, quarantine yourself, not see absolutely anybody. Then three days before the the uh, the surgery, you would do your PCR test. It would be negative. You would then continue to self isolate until the day of surgery. You would do all your surgery, and then you would self isolate after surgery. That would be the most ideal. Is that realistic? No, who can come here for a month? You know, nobody, okay? So, once again, we gotta choose something where it's not as ideal perhaps, but it is, you know, within the realm of reality, uh, but, you know, we wanna be like up in this range. We don't wanna be in this range here, where you're like, oh, you know, let's just do it exactly the same as we did before, show up, you know, day before surgery, don't do any social distancing, don't care about anything else, and just, just do things the way we used to do them. No, we can't do that either. Okay, that's gonna be a problem because the curves that are now doing this and starting to come down, if you do this, then they'll come up again and then we're all, for lack of a better word, screwed, <laughs> right? Then they shut us down again, nobody can have surgery, uh, you know, someone comes up positive in the clinic, uh, we gotta shut the clinic down and all these things. Nobody wants that, that's what we're trying to avoid. So we gotta be here, we gotta be where uh, it's, Perhaps not like a hundred percent ideal, but pretty pretty ideal. Uh, but it's also you know realistic for our patients. Okay, all right. So this is the current testing protocol that we have at this time. It means you have to come in to Miami ideally three days before surgery. Okay, and you will go to a center that we've partnered with that that, that we know that they do a good job, um, and they're gonna do your PCR test. Okay, um, and then you're going to get that result within 24 to 48 hours. And if that result is negative, then we will move forward with your pre-op and your surgery and everything else. Why do I think this is, you know, one of the most ideal situations? A, the, the biggest reason why a PCR test can give you a false negative is if it's not done correctly. Okay, the center where we're sending you okay is run by two internal medicine doctors who i've known for a long time and i know for sure they're doing this correctly okay they have they've been you know doing it this entire time uh and they have a lot of experience with this by now they've done you know hundreds of tests and they're doing it correctly and they have a very good relationship with the lab such that they can get those results within 24 to 48 hours and if there is an issue they can just pick up the phone and call them right away okay this is not pure we're not doing the test here in-house. This is being done at a separate location. There's many reasons for that. One, they have the experience. Two, they have the connection with the lab. Three, we don't want the positive patient here, right? We're trying to avoid that. So 
um, that we did the labs in house and they become positive, then that meant by definition the positive patient was in house. We don't want that. So that's why we're doing it at a separate location for all those reasons. Okay? Now, people ask the question why this test that takes longer and why not do the very, very rapid, you know, 10 minute test or so? There's two, there's two different types of tests there's that PCR test which is what I've been talking about. And there's a serology test. That's the one that checks for antibodies, okay? The PCR test actually checks for the virus itself. Do you have that virus RNA in your system, okay? Um, and can pick up the virus earlier. The serology test, they check for antibodies that your body produces to the virus. There's two of them, IgM and IgG. IG, IgM, excuse me, comes out first, usually about seven, five to seven days. IgG comes out later, maybe about two weeks or so. I thought that serology tests were also going to be the, the way to do it. And actually, in fact, I, I bought 500 of these tests, okay, at our cost, because it's going to be the, because at that time, which was approximately two or three weeks ago, people felt that they were going to be adequate and it was going to be easy because we just get a drop of blood, you put it on the test, you get the results within 10 minutes, and, and boom, you're good to go. If you have uh, IgG, that means you already have the virus and you're immune and you're good to go. If it's negative, it's negative, and you had the IgM, that means you know you wouldn't be able to do the surgery. That's the way it was going to be, and that's what I was planning for. And I was not going to charge anything extra or do anything else, and, and that was my plan. But unfortunately, as this is a fluid, ever-changing situation, uh, it has come to light that a lot of these tests are not accurate. Okay, a lot of these tests are not FDA approved. Uh, even under the Emergency Utilization Act that the FDA has, okay? Um, and, and therefore, that we would have to do something different and that what's become the gold standard is that PCR test, okay? That PCR test needs to be done and it needs to be negative within 72 to 48 hours before surgery, okay? And the reason why we want to do it here is because we have a lab that we can trust and that we know we'll be doing it correctly. And we're providing that service or you know, that opportunity for, for you guys, okay? Is there a cost to it? Yes. If you were just to walk up to this place right off the street and say, hey, I want to test, it would be $225. We're absorbing over 50% of that cost. So there's going to be, there is a charge of $100 to the patient and the rest is being absorbed by me, basically. Okay? Um, so we are working with this group and, and if we can, you know, get a, 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 we can demonstrate that lots of people are going and we can get a better group rate, I will pass all of those savings off to the patient, okay? And we can make it, it's up to the point where I can absorb the entire cost ourselves and we will, okay? I wanna do whatever's best for you guys and I'm really trying hard to do that, all right? As of right now, we won't be able to do the serology test, at least not on its own. We still, we still do have them, we can use them as backup, uh, for whatever reason, you know, we can use them to like uh, to add to the PCR test, okay, as something extra, and I, and I have them available, and if we need to use them, we will. But as of right now, using them on their own um, is it, not what is being recommended. However, once again, if next week the FDA says you're good to go, then of course we can do that, and and then we can, and those are like really really fast ten minute tests that can be done here in, in the office, okay. All right, so we've talked about uh, you know the protocols. We've talked about the testing, um, and I just want to I'm going to mention something here before we get into all the questions because I know there's a lot, and I really I'm really going to try to answer uh, pretty much as many of them as we can. Uh, there's, okay, there is going to be a there is a a portion of all this that is patient responsibility. Okay, guys. You guys are going to have to work with us, okay? And remember, you're not doing this only for yourself, uh, but you're doing it for your families, you're doing it for our staff, you're doing it for me, you're doing it for all our families, okay? This is, this is, a, this is literally the uh, we are all in this together uh, moment, okay? So you guys are going to have certain responsibilities, okay? Once you get to Miami, three days beforehand, you do your test, okay? People ask, well, what about, you know, you know, day two and day, you know, say, say three, two, one before surgery. What about day two and one? Well, during that time, you are going to have to be responsible. You're going to have to basically kind of self-isolate, you know, and, and do social distancing. It's not going to be like before. Like I said, it's not going to be like November 2019 where, where it was kind of, you know, fun, right? You would come to Miami, 
a couple of days before surgery and then you, you go out to South Beach and hang out and go to the shopping mall and all these things. It's not going to be like that anymore. Okay? You have to come. Basically, you come, you do your test, you go to wherever you're staying, you go to Pure, you go wherever you're staying, that's it. You don't go anywhere else. Okay? Um, you got to practice all social distancing and thing, and um, as well as frequent hand washing, of course, using the sanitizers and using masks anytime you travel outside of wherever you're staying. So masks, you know, when you're traveling, masks, of course, here in the clinic. Uh, if you do, say, have to go for, like, say, for the pharmacy, uh, masks, okay, your caregiver also. Your caregiver should be doing all this as well. So frequent hand washing, hand sanitizing, using masks for the caregiver as well, okay? Uh, and yes, you got to use all your precautions, all right? Uh, uh, we, we've been asked, you know, what about the caregiver? So you're testing us, but we're with this person, you know, and I'm like, well, I, like I said, you, you got to be here, right? Most ideal, we test everybody. We test your caregiver, we test your entire family, but we can't do that, right? So, yeah, we test, we test you because you're the one who's literally going to be on the table where we have to remove that mask, where, we, where anesthesia has to be in your mouth, they got to intubate you, you're going to be in the positive pressure, ventilation, and all these things. So yes, you are the patient, you are the most important person that we need to test. Also, if you are, uh, for whatever reason, positive, you don't want to be getting surgery. It's going to make your recovery um, on the lower side just a little bit more difficult. On the higher side, it can be very, very potentially dangerous, okay? So you definitely don't want to have active COVID-19 disease at the time of surgery. So that's why we're doing this, okay? We want to make sure that you don't have active disease at the time of surgery, okay? All right, so I know I've gone through a lot of information. Uh, I think I've gone through all the protocols. Uh, I'm going to dive in here into some questions that have been asked already on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, and so we'll go through these. And then, of course, I know, I know, ladies, I know you've been asking a lot of questions. I will go try to get to most of those as well. Uh, so please, uh, I'm, not, I'm in no rush today. It's a lot to cover. And uh, I'll be happy to do it. So, but I just need everyone to be patient. Uh, with me right now and with our staff and everything else. Okay, first question we had on here, uh, will there be a test on weekends? So unfortunately, as of, as of uh, right now, the answer is no. The test will be Monday through Friday at 2.30 p.m., okay? It's pretty kind of locked in. So when you arrive, you arrive the day of your test, you have to make sure that you're able to make it to the testing center by 2.30 p.m., okay? It's a fairly narrow window. Um, so you got to make sure you have enough time to do that. Uh, there are no testings on Saturdays or Sundays. Okay. This brings really the, this brings the, the Wednesday people to are are kind of the most difficult situation there. Again, most ideal Wednesday people will come in Friday. Now I know that's that adds a lot of time. So if Wednesday if you're a Wednesday person, you can't come in Friday. Absolutely not. It's just impossible for you. Uh, then you have to come in Monday, we'll do your test Monday, we'll try to rush that lab a bit, try to get the result you know, closer to the 24 hours than the 48 hour, so that we can have everything ready for your surgery on Wednesday, and we may have to put you more towards the end of the day on Wednesday to make sure that we have that back, okay? All right, uh, so for example, they, uh, surgery's on the 20th, you have to be there the 17th or 16th, so you would have to be there three days before, which would be, say, for example, in this example, the 17th, but you have to be there early enough to get to the center by 2.30 p.m. Okay, that's the caveat there. Will we update the patient portal to show different times and costs and everything else? Yes, we will, um, and, and we're going to do that. We're going to we have remember there's hundreds of you, and there's one pre-op coordinator, Yanisi, who made our video earlier today. She will be reaching out to everybody, but she will be reaching out in kind of a sequential order. Okay. So if you're early May, those are the first people she's going to reach out to. If you're later in May, then you'll be next. And then early June, and so forth, and so forth, and so forth. So if your surgery is in August, do not expect a call tomorrow. You're not going to get a call tomorrow because we have to go through early May, late May, June, etc. Okay? Also, like I said, fluid situation. By August, it's possible things may change, but I can't tell you that. I don't know for sure. Okay? All right, so I think I answered this one already. You know, the test is three days before surgery. How do I know that the patient's not gonna get infected day two and day one? That's where patient responsibility comes in, okay? You guys have to take part of this. You have to take ownership in this as well. You have to protect yourselves, your family. You have to protect us, our staff, and our families, okay? 
All right. Um, when will our coordinators contact us? Like I just said, so she's gonna go in sequential order. She's gonna contact you. You will get um, all of the all of the um, the details. I'm not gonna get the details right now, but you will get the details. You know what time is what exact time is your appointment? Where exactly is the location? All right, all these things. You're not gonna get. Um, you okay, so all the details will be given to you. Uh, so don't worry about that. Okay. Um, are there any policies that allow me to prescribe medications outside of you know Florida? I can prescribe non-narcotics. Okay, so um, I can prescribe you know your antibiotics or anti-nausea medication, things of that nature, the meprosin, um, if needed. Uh, but I I cannot uh, prescribe narcotics outside of Florida. So unfortunately, those you would have to do here. Okay. Okay, anesthesia questions. Those are these are great questions. You know, this is someone who you know seems to be a nurse, perhaps someone in the ICU. They're asking where we're following a lot of the protocols for anesthesia. And the answer is yes. I didn't want to bog down into the details here. Uh, we have our two anesthetists are looking into all of their um, uh, anesthesia related and CRNA related uh, protocols. One of them does involve using these hydroponic um, uh, filters, which basically filter out ninety nine point nine percent. Uh, of any bacteria or viruses, okay? And we are acquiring those and using those as well. Uh, but there's several other things that they're gonna have to do. They're, they're actually, they're gonna be the ones that, are, that have to wear kind of the more the heavy duty face shields and masks and stuff like that, because they're the ones that are, you know, literally like the closest to your nose and your mouth. Um, and so we have, we have basically, we have glide scopes here. We have all these different things. I don't wanna to get too bogged down into the details because a lot of people won't understand but the answer is yes, we are following those protocols as well. Okay, will this requirement be permanent uh, or just for the next few months, my surgery's in December? I don't know. I, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. I don't know uh, how permanent all this is gonna be. It is a fluid situation. It seems to change almost on a day by day or weekly basis. Eventually, we will have a vaccine. And once we have that, then, then life can go back to kind of how the way things were, as long as everyone gets vaccinated. But that's, you know, that's gonna be probably not till early next year, uh, would be my best guess. Um, and so until we have that vaccine, this is our new normal. This is our new normal. And people have to understand that either myself personally or pure, we don't have control of all that. In the very same way that you know, I can't control that you're carrying a very highly contagious and potentially lethal disease. Um, I can't control that you get hit by a cart, you know, while you're in Miami, driving back and forth to Pure. I can't control, in the same way I can't control a hurricane that may come and hit us, you know, during the summer. I can't control these things, okay? So, uh, we are doing our best, you know, with the information that we have at this time. Will I ever be providing rapid testing? As soon as that's available and it's possible, then the answer is yes. I don't, wanna, I don't want to do this, you know, as, as long as I don't need to, okay? I'm not forcing people to come here three days beforehand just because, you know, on a whim. So if we find a faster place, if we find faster PCR testing, if the serology tests get approved by the FDA and are allowed, if these things happen, then for sure we will, we will do that. We'll do it as fast as possible. We'll minimize any cost to the patient and we'll try to minimize the amount of time you need to be here, okay? Um, all right, is there an opportunity to cover the testing? Like I said, yeah, uh, we are covering more than 50% of the testing right now. And if I can lower that, then you know, the, the, I'll pass that directly on to you. Uh, and hopefully we do get to a point where we're pure at basically absorbing that, okay? Um, what kind of process is the test and the type? So it's, it is a PCR test, very important. It's a PCR test. It's a nasal swab type of test, okay? Uh, and that's what, at this current time, is considered the gold standard uh, to be done, okay? Uh, okay, if a doll, or actually, we don't, no, if a pearl, <laughs> if a pearl tests positive, what happens? Okay, super important question, and I haven't talked about that. If a pearl tests positive, you can't come into the facility, and you cannot have your surgery at that time. Your surgery will have to be postponed, okay? All right, surgery will have to be postponed and we'll try to do everything we can to accommodate you at a future date, okay? We cannot be held responsible for that. Again, I cannot be held responsible for the potential fact that you may be carrying this disease, okay? Um, but we will do everything that we can to help you. Uh, having said that, we can't do the surgery at that moment in time. 
Okay? Um, all right. Okay. I think we covered pretty much all the questions here. Uh, and, uh, and, and one of them, actually, one of, the, one of the last one here says, can we get our own testing? Okay. All right. So, so let, me, let me answer that question because it's come up a lot. Again, and I'll, and I'll use this one here. What I, where I want to be is here, very close to the most ideal range, but still within the realm of reality. And I would like for our patients to come here three days before surgery, go to the center that I know for sure knows how to do this test well, that I know for sure has the availability and the number of tests to be done. And I know for sure we'll do the appropriate PCR test that you need, okay? And therefore, we're trying to organize all of that for you so that there aren't any issues and there aren't any problems, okay? If you absolutely, absolutely cannot make it within the three days and you, feel, and you think that there's an ability to get a PCR test, okay, near home within 72 hours of surgery, we may be able to work with that, but that's gonna be taken on a case-by-case -case basis and, and we have to make sure that it is the appropriate test that's being done within the appropriate time frame, okay, so that that can happen because the last thing that we want, okay, is for you to show up here a day before surgery with some serology test or something else that's completely not appropriate, okay? And we're just gonna throw our hands in there and say, I'm sorry, but we can't do your surgery. And then you're gonna be very, very upset <laughs> at us and, and blame us and stuff like that. But I'm telling you right now that that's, that's why, what we're trying to avoid because we don't want to be canceling people last minute. That's the last thing that we want to do, okay? So, we'll take that on a case by case basis, but we have to make sure that it is the correct test within the correct time frame. Okay? Again, people ask, oh, uh, my insurance says they cover this test. Can I do it with my insurance and not pay the $100? Uh, sure. But again, you have, you know, this is where you're, you're going to, now, now you're going to become even more responsible, right? You have to make sure that it's the correct test, and you have to make sure that it's within the time frame allowed. And then we verify it, and if it's all good, you're good to go. But if it's not, then it's a problem. Okay. Do you know how much the test is and who will be paying for it? Yeah, I answered that. Um, so, uh, once again, so if you were to just walk off the street, it would be $225. We're absorbing over 50% of that, so we're so the patient's responsibility uh, is only $100. And like I said, if uh, I am able to lower that even further, because I can demonstrate that we're having, you know, uh, get like a group discount or something like that, then I will pass off all those savings to the patients. If we then, if in the future, we're able to do those rapid tests, those serology tests, the FDA approves them and everything else, uh, and we don't have to do this, you know, significantly more expensive PCR test, then that will be covered by Pure, but we're not there yet. So hopefully we get there, but we're not there right now. And for the patients who have surgery on Tuesday, when would they need to arrive? So surgery Tuesday, so they need to arrive, say by, Thursday, okay? Um, yeah, Thursday would be the most ideal um, so that there's, you know, basically, uh, or Friday. Uh, Friday would be okay too. Thursday would be the most ideal. We do get results over the weekend. So we can't do the test over the weekend, but we can get results over the weekend. So uh, actually, if you get here Friday, that would be okay too. You have to make sure you get here before 2.30 p.m., get your test done, we can get the result uh, by Monday, and then on Tuesday, you would have your surgery. For patients who test positive, is it a fee to reschedule or is it pretty easy to get a new date? There won't be an additional fee, okay, from, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna charge you an additional fee to reschedule because you tested positive for a COVID thing because I understand that just as much as, as it is out of my control is that, you know, a lot of it is out of your control as well. So there, there's not gonna be a rescheduling fee, but we will have to reschedule and we can't assume the responsibility for other costs associated with having to reschedule. So if my surgery is on Wednesday, can I arrive Sunday and do the COVID test Monday? Yeah, that's what we're probably going to have to do for Wednesday cases. Those are kind of the toughest ones there uh, because of the fact that we can't do the test Saturday, Sunday. So for Wednesday, uh, like I said, in the most ideal world, you can come Friday. I know that's not feasible for a lot of people. So then we, we would do Monday. We would try to get that test, you know, we give, you know, give a call, tell them that, this, that you know, these are the, the, the highest priority. Uh, try to get the result back in, and then we may have to put your, your Wednesday case as one of the later in the day cases. So when do we need to have PCR if getting it at home? Again, so we need, we need that, so the test has to be done within 72 
to 48 hours prior to surgery. It can be done. It cannot be done sooner than that. It can be. It cannot be done two weeks before surgery. That doesn't help us. It can be done a week before surgery. That doesn't help us either. It has to be done within 72 to 48 hours to surgery. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You've answered a lot of questions. We have, All right. so for the, everybody, it's three days that you will make no exception. So for Thursday surgeries, they have to be here mm -hmm. Monday. Correct, yeah. Yeah, we have to give enough time for that. And like I said, so that, that should give us enough time to get that result back. Uh, make sure that, you know, that when you come into the clinic, you're negative um, and that we maintain this entire clinic uh, a COVID-19 negative area. So under this new protocol, what are the total amount of days that you think your patients should be here? So they got to be here three days beforehand, at least five days after, and then you have your day of surgery. So that's nine days, okay, for most patients. Do you know if they accept insurance at the testing site? They do not, but uh, so they don't, so no insurance there. Will massages still be happening at Pure? Okay, yeah, great question. Okay, so uh, uh, some of the questions they're asking was, well, you know, how do I know guidelines are being followed at recovery houses and, you know, different massage uh, places? Um, I don't know, and I can't, you know, and I can't control everything that happens again, so I can't be held responsible for that. Um, of course, I think, you know, I encourage everyone to call their, you know, massage therapy place and, and their recovery home if they're gonna stay there, uh, and even their hotel, and make sure that they're you know following all the necessary guidelines. Um, but what I can tell you is that for, we we for the massages that we do here, we will you know we will continue to do massages here at Pure because I know of course I know Coraito, I know her for a while, and I know she's going to be following everything that we've uh, you know all the guidelines that we place here at Pure. If we are fairly local, can we drive to Miami, take the test, and go back home? Sure. Yeah. So, so for local patients, you know, things are a little bit easier in that sense. Um, so you, you definitely can come take the test, go back home. Um, and, 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 you know, it's, it, you have a little bit more flexibility in that sense. But remember this, you go back home, you're not going to go, you know, hang out with a bunch of people and have a party. You're going to go back home. You're going to self isolate. You're going to do social distancing, probably even more than you think when you're doing right now during, uh, during this time, because we, we need, you to remain negative in the interim, okay? All right? People are gonna say, well, doc, that's not 100% proof, of course, I mean, we know that, um, but we're, we're the exact, you know, again, yeah, we're not 100%, but we wanna be here because 100% is not, re not realistic, okay? Um, so we need our patients to cooperate in order to, you know, to get to as ideal as possible. So currently the deposits last one year. So for patients who are, have to keep rescheduling and might get close to that one year mark, will you extend that? Um, I'm not, not sure, not sure. That's it. We're gonna take that on a case by case basis. You know, you know, sometimes it was just one extension, you know, one, one uh, change, it's okay. But if you're like multiple, multiple changes, we can't, we can't keep doing that. So um, we'll have to kind of take that on a case by case basis. Do you know what type of test this is? Is it the swab or? Anything? Yeah, so again, so it's gonna be the PCR nasal swab test, okay? Um, so it's gonna be kind of like a, you know, one of those drive-through testing where you're gonna go in, in the vehicle uh, into this kind of alleyway, all right? Um, they're gonna check your ID. They're gonna make sure that you had an appointment for the day, which we're gonna take care of. We're gonna take care of coordinating all that um, and then basically they're going to swab your, your nose, you know, they're going to get into that nasal pharynx. It's not that comfortable, but it needs to be done. Um, and then you kind of just keep driving. Okay. Can we Uber there? Yeah. If the Uber driver is cool with it, then for sure. Um, you can Uber there and then you can get it done. Um, it shouldn't take a whole lot of time. Um, it's kind of one of these revolving kind of car, um, drive through type places. Um, but, you know, of course, they're, they're gonna get everybody done. You know, uh, oh, another question was, why can't we go to any of the other kind of uh, centers here in Miami? So, um, right now, they're not currently um, doing tests on people that are younger than 65 years old or completely symptomatic and that haven't had any, any uh, you know, they haven't been in touch 
or in close uh, quarters with anyone that they have been positive, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we need this for, uh, for pre-op purposes, um, which is why, um, why we've had to you know, call several places and find, find this place to help us out uh, for pre-op purposes. Can we update FMLA so that we can be covered from work? Um, sure, yeah, I think we, you know, we can, we're gonna work with you as much as we can with FMLA and everything else. Should I reschedule my Wednesday surgery to the, sur to the surgery date if I can only do the test on a Monday? No, so like I said, so for Wednesday, um, you know, probably most patients or some of the patients are gonna to have to get tested on Monday. Um, and, and so we'll, you know, we'll do that, we'll get your Monday test. We'll have to try to see if we can prioritize those to uh, get them closer to like the 24 hour window instead of the 48 hour window. Uh, get that test result back uh, before your case on Wednesday. My test is on Tuesday. Is it possible to reschedule for Friday? I think she means surgery. Uh, to so, so your surgery is on Tuesday. Can you reschedule surgery for Friday? Um, it's going to be tough. Um, I mean, we can always look and we can always try, um, but we are we're very booked. We are very booked uh, all of May and all of June and most of July. Okay. So it's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit difficult um, because of that, okay? Um, so, you know, of course, that we have to take that on a case by case basis. We'll see how that Friday, you know, we'll have to see if we can work it out. When will Pure resume surgery? So, again, with, given the information that I have today at this time, um, surgery will, will resume May 10th. Um, and that's because the order by the governor uh, stopping elective surgeries is set to end on May 8th. If I take the test on a Monday, am I still going to have my pre-op on Tuesday? If you take the test on a Monday, oh, pre-op Tuesday for, for Wednesday, case? I believe so. Wasn't yeah. clear, but... Uh, okay. Um, yes, yes. So, for, yes, again, so... Wednesday is the most difficult. We're going to do your test Monday. We're going to call. We're going to try to get the results as early as we can. Uh, but most likely your pre-op will be on, on a Tuesday uh, later, on like a late Tuesday. Okay. Do you think Pure will ever offer on-site testing in the future? That's, that's the hope. That's the hope. But it, you know, a few things need to happen. One, um, these rapid testing to be more available and more accepted. Okay. Um, so like I said, I have serology tests. I actually have them um, because that was my plan. Um, but right now, you know, there, it, there's the FDA is not saying that that's like the right way to go. So uh, so as soon as they, they, they allow us to do that, then yes, we will do testing in house. We'll do the rapid testing. We, and then, you know, we'll change things so that you have to be here uh, for so long. Do you know how far is the testing center? Um, it's, it's from, from pure. Um, it's approximately 20 minutes um, from Miami international airport. Um, it's also approximately 15 to 20 minutes depending on traffic. So not very far. Will you be doing surgeries on Saturdays? Yep. So we are doing surgery. Uh, so, so that's another great question because people have, have asked, you know, uh, what, what, what have you done with the backlog? How are you going to work things out? So yeah, we've added a day. Um, and in some days we've added a surgery. So as you know, up until now, my limit was five. There are going to be some days with six surgeries. Uh, and we've added Saturday and so that we can get through that backlog basically May and June and then in July uh, we're gonna be you know back to basically back to normal our kind of five days a week maximum five cases but that that brings up a, a very very excellent point okay what you know one of the reasons what, what is one of the reasons why you chose to come to pure uh, uh, you know and, and to have me as your surgeon of course there's, I know there's multiple reasons and everything else one of them has to do with safety and one of them has to do with the fact that this patient, you're not going to be sitting in the lobby with, you know, 10 or 20 people, all right? There's not going to be multiple surgeons, each of them doing eight cases uh, a day, okay, which is, which is a, you know, a, a, a significant amount of people uh, and things like that. So, you know, these are a lot of the advantages that you, that you guys have come, uh, that, that you guys will have when you come to Pure. And a lot of the reasons why, why you know, you have chosen Pure and, and, and you can see how that is really coming into a, like effect right now. How that, that's really, really helpful. So 
This is a, a lower, you know, low volume center, single surgeon. I have complete control of everything that goes on here. We're JCO certified. Okay, highest level of, of certification by the Joint Commission or OR. Okay. So all of those things are really coming into play here uh, where you're going to feel safe, you're going to feel secure, and as long as we follow all these protocols and we, ha we have your, your partnership and all this, uh, it's going to be great. You know, everyone's going to be having their surgery, everyone's going to be happy, everyone's going to be ex extremely safe. A few concerning questions about your well-being. How will you avoid getting burnt out? We're worried about you, Dr. Earl. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. So. Uh, well, I've been uh, resting a lot for the past seven weeks, <laughs> so uh, I've been sleeping, I've been resting, I've been eating way too much, um, but, but um, I'm ready. We're ready to head back, um, and, and like I said, we are kind of going to pace things throughout the day. Um, we are going to try to do our best to take care of our pearls that, you know, that unfortunately had to cancel um, late March and April. Um, and, but it's not a permanent situation. It's not so. So really, that's that's the bottom line. Um, it's not going to turn into you know a six day a week, six surgery a day type thing. No. Once we get to where we need to get to get to, we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to to what what we're used to, what you're used to, what everyone's used to. And like I said, that's you know by July we'll we'll be right back. Great job. Thank you for answering the questions. Lastly, yeah. are you still communicating with all your staff members and making sure that they are? quarantine properly so they don't come to the office and infect other people of course yeah so we take that extremely seriously okay uh it wouldn't you know doing all of this would be for nothing um if if my, my staff members were not following you know the, basically the rules not only that the rules that that the government you know at the, at the national state and local level imposed but basically pure rules okay so yes um we never we never shut down actually you know and we never we never even laid off a single staff member this entire time. Why? Because it's a family. It's a pure family. These are people that we love. These are people that we trust. These are people that we know want the best for pure, the best for our patients, okay? So we kept everybody, absolutely everybody on board this entire time, okay? And and because, we, because they know that we trust them and the trust is mutual, they're doing absolutely everything that they can to then make sure that our patients, which is really what, this is why we're all here, right? This is why we're all here, to make sure that you guys are safe. So yes, they have all the protocols, they're following all the protocols, and we're all in this together. All right? Okay, guys, so I really, really hope we got to at least 90% of the questions, <laughs> okay? Um, I know it's a lot, I know it's a lot of changes. I hope the anxiety level has come down. I hope the reasoning for all this um, has, you know, ha has been understood. Um, and like I said, it's a fluid situation. Things may change. As soon as they change, we'll let you know. Okay. Um, and we really, really hope that everyone's out there staying safe. We really, really are excited about opening up again. Uh, we're excited about doing surgery again. And, uh, and well, stay tuned. Okay. Because next week, uh, we'll be back with Hump Day with Dr. Alex Earl. Ciao.